starting Third Age Total War. Three, two, one. What's up everybody, Bradford here, and I am going to be playing a little bit of the Third Age Total War. Now if you're not familiar with this mod, essentially it's a total conversion mod of uh, Medieval 2 Total War Kingdoms. Uh, with Steam you have to kind of finagle it to get it to work, but was able to get it to work now and uh, wanted to go ahead and, and just kind of play through a grand campaign. Now this is going to be split up in a couple different episodes, you're not going to have to sit there and watch an entire campaign in one sitting uh, we'll we'll have it out but we'll, ha we'll have it coming you know out to you within the next you know couple weeks or so uh, we're gonna do the full campaign and as you can see you've got multiple factions to choose from from the different factions that you see in the Lord of the Rings uh, you've got Gondor Rohan Dale the dwarves which look as though they are situated in Edebor in the Iron Hills the Free Peoples of Eddiador, the High Elves in Lindon, and then obviously in Rivendell, Sylvan Elves, Lorien and Northern Mirkwood, which is kind of interesting. King Thranduil is the leader of of both Lorien and and Mirkwood. You would think that you would think that it would be you know Galadriel, but whatever. Um, Mordor, which they have Southern Mirkward, obviously because that's where Dol Guldur is, and then obviously Mordor. Isengard. The Orcs of the Misty Mountains, put you right in the middle of all them people. The Orcs of Gundabad. The Harad, down in the south. And Rune, to the east. So, you can play as any one of these guys if you really want to. Uh, obviously you're not going to have the continuity of like, you know, the elves aren't going to, are possibly going to fight elves, the free peoples of Eddiador might have to fight the dwarves and stuff like that. Um, this is a total war game, so the idea is that you go to war against everybody. I'm going to play Eriador, and I'm going to try my best not to fight the elves or the, the dwarves or anything. I'm going to try and just kind of focus on the orcs of Gundabad, because they're going to be the closest faction to me. Uh, but uh, it may get to the point where I, I kind of have where I kind of have to. Uh, apparently my my my, th my path to victory is going to be I have to hold 40 different regions including Brelin, Arthedain, the Weather Hills, Cardolan, uh, Arthedain is twice, uh, North Downs, Lake Evendom, South Downs, North Arthedain, Mithaithel, Swanfleet, the Edmores, and eliminate the factions Orcs of Misty Mountains and the Orcs of Gundabad. So let's let's get going. Let's set this no time limit battle. Let's see what the short victory of 30 regions. Eliminate the factions orcs. Okay, so the long is gonna give us more stuff to go with. Uh, apparently this is really good with flexible light infantry, but it lacks heavily armored units, that would make sense. Um, mainly because you know your your best fighters are going to be the the you know the Dunedain, the Rangers. Well, they're known for being light armored and everything like that. So let's start this campaign. Nice little cutscene of the Shire. I think it kind of looks like washed out color wise.
You would think you would use a you know, spearman for that, though. When this game released, you know, Medieval 2 Total War, and the computer I had at the time could just barely run it. This is one of the cool things. Every one of these splash screens has a pretty cool quote from the book. Behind him marched proudly a dusty line of men, well armed and bearing great battle axes, grim faced they were, fought along the fat Lord of Lasanark, Minas Tirith. Losarnak. Excuse me. Okay, welcome to Middle Earth. A message from the council. My lord, ever since the earliest days of Arda, indeed since the elf or dwarf ever woke upon Middle Earth's green fields, there have been a code of conduct. There has been a code of conduct for any leader of free peoples in war or in peace. We, your humble servants, urge you to adhere to these rules in order to gain the best from your time here in Middle Earth. Firstly, it is considered utterly villainous to betray the financial system of the world by the use of cheating in order to get. <laughs> <laughs> so the developers are telling you don't use cheats. Secondly, is consider cowardly in the extreme to break bonds with a trusted friend in whom the oath of alliance has been given. If you wish to make war upon an ally, you should first break your bonds with him and then only attack upon the following season. Thirdly, it is a typical it is typical of idle kings to follow the poor habit known as auto resolve. <laughs> we strongly request that you refrain from such, such neglect of your duties, but it should clear commands to your generals. Okay, so it's saying you know take take part in every skirmish. Lastly, the use of arcane arts to li lift the fog of war is considered a path to short path to insanity. For s in seeing your rivals and opponents, the power may be too great and lure you to the dark temptation of world domination. Remember that both the campaign and battle are supposed to be played on very hard. If it is too easy, then you're not doing it right. We beseech you, great lord, to refrain from the vices we warned you uh, for the betterment of your time here. This is awesome. It's a letter from the guys who made the mod, basically saying, don't cheat. <laughs> don't take the easy way out. Yes, my lord. So, obviously, they didn't do a ton of, like, voiceover -y, oh, voiceovers, I would assume. My lord. But, Your orders, my lord. we've got Gandalf the Grey here commanding an army. That's pretty cool. And yes, my lord. King Aragorn. Age 38. How old is Your Gandalf right Lord. now? <laughs> Gandalf's only 22. That's pretty funny. <laughs> so let's kind of take a look at what we can see. So we control Hobbiton, Longbottom, Mikkel, Mikkel Delving, Anuminas, Fornast Erain in the North Downs. Staddle, and then obviously Bree, which looks to be our capital. <laughs> Hobbitry in arms, that's great. Alright, so, let's take a look at what we have coming in farming-wise with trade. wonder who we're trading with. Okay, we're already allied with the High Elves. We're Enemies of the bandits, which is good. So I don't have to worry about the high elves being awful. Okay, I'm going to auto manage taxes because that's a pain in the butt to keep track of. Otherwise, I'm going to pretty much strike out on my own. Must be the Grey Havens over here. That's as far out as we can zoom. Let's see if I can't change the camera control settings. No. Awesome. Alright, well, 
The orcs of Gundabad are probably going to be high. Bandits own that village. So let's just start by building some improvements first. So if we build some stables, we've got 10,000 gold. If we build some stables, we should be able to train some northmen. Is this region grassland? Hills, medium fertility. And it doesn't say, you know. Followers of Melkor. Crap, I've got followers of Melkor in my midst. That's not good. Okay. I wonder if I can change the capital. So I would want the capital to be Anuminas. Yeah, I can do that. It costs 5,000 gold coins, though. So we'll be doing that later. For now, let's actually go ahead and do the communal farming in Bree. Same thing in Staddle, it looks like. Oh, land clearance. Just have to do that one. High fertility. farming there that brings up our should bring up our income a little bit and then let's see what we can do at Fortnast. okay that increases culture hunting cap you know what since this is a castle on kind of like the the edges of my a domain. I'm gonna go ahead and build up. I can't recruit anybody. <laughs> That's awesome. Well then, maybe I should send Gandalf up there Orders. with By some Lord. dudes. By your command. Joining forces, Middle. Yes, my lord. Yes. We shall continue right. tomorrow, my lord. And let's see if I can't get my spy Coaching quietly up here. I shall continue tomorrow. Tomorrow's journey planned out. So how much should I get for next turn? Oh, I should get a little bit then. Cool. And since I can't see anybody, it's not showing me their moves, which is good. I don't want to see them all anyway. Mordor. Bandits. A young woman of fitting breeding and station has been discovered as a potential partner for this man. Lord Arafor. Sure, why not? Okay, so I should probably try to get <laughs> one of the Palantiri. Turn report. Current leader, Dark Lord of Mordor. He's got the most money. <laughs> and Mordor has the strongest... Wow. I'm glad I'm not down there. So where are we at? This that was a four turn thing I thought. Yeah. I didn't build anything in Bree. Alright, 
let's do that. I can't recruit anybody there either. Alright, so that's about all I can do this turn. Your orders, my lord. Let's get Gandalf up here. What? Okay, I've got a small army there. Eldarion. Just can't recruit anybody. That's fine. Oh, this is cool. This just gives you some uh, information about the area in Middle-earth. Arthedain is one of the three kingdoms of Middle-earth that resulted from the breakup of Arnor during the Third Age. In the Third Age, 1601, hobbits came to Arthedain with the permission of Argeleb II. They settled in the land that would be later called the Shire. They, were, they would be subjected to the kings of Arthedain and tasked with maintenance and infrastructure, especially the vital bridge of Stone Bros, which is the bridge of the brand new wine bridge. Um, it's kind of funny. Argeleb is the name of the king, and my agent's name is Argeleb, so that's it's kind of funny. Looks like a bandit. Oh no, what's happening? Hopefully my spy wasn't seen. Yay! These guys not happy. Huh. The Shire is corrupted. <laughs> That's not good. Just can't believe we have followers of Melkor. A new kid. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the communal farming there as well, because why not? Staff of Gandalf. All right, let's end this turn as well. It's winter! My lords, I bring you an important message from your military advisors. The flame of war is stirring in all of Middle-earth, but our military infrastructure is all, still only rudimentary. While militias and conscripts are being levied across our domain, we lack the equipment, logistical support, and command structure needed to bring the full might of our armies to bear. 
Mobilization and general preparations are underway, but it would still be around 10 years before our professional troops are ready to step into the fray while the reorganization and arming of our elite warriors and the implementation of our heaviest and most destructive resources may take another decade. We shall send you... We shall be sent... Word shall be sent to you as each stage nears completion. Okay, fun. Oh yeah, I made money this turn. Grab those guys while we can. And. It's a lot of gold coins that I don't have right now. Let's do another bowyer. All right, turn four. <laughs> this early game was kind of slow, but I'm going to assume it's going to pick up at some point. Shire autonomy proposal. My lord, a message from the Shire has arrived. It reads that being upon granted the Shire, hobbits swore allegiance to Odgaleb the second, the king of Arthedain, and were obliged to speed royal messengers, repair roads. Hobbit's reinforcements will also be offered to protect the Shire and Ediador. Huh. I wonder what this means. What else? You know, what? I'm gonna give the Shire autonomy because you know why not? Okay, so can I recruit some? Oh yeah, I can recruit Archer Militia. Because that's a thing I need. Okay, that'll be done in one turn. Let's queue some stuff up there for that. That'll be done in three turns. I guess a new one else will be the same. Three turns. Alright. About all I can do right now. Oh, apparently I'm supposed to send emissaries to Isengard. Why would I do that? Okay, I guess I will. So I guess I'll be rewarded with some stuff. Woodland Hunters. Yay! I forgot, I gave the Shire autonomy. <laughs> I can't build anything there. It is still listed as my thing. Oh, it's because I control them, that's why. They're still mine, but they're autonomous. They're an autonomous collective. Fine, I'll just build my thing here. I won't. Okay. Need 
someone removed, sir? No, not yet. My lord. Alright. Stopping here. So I'm going to send my guy out to Isengard and see what can become of that. Stables there now. Where have we done in a minute? It looks like one turn. Is the Shire building anything yet? <laughs> no. Why you no know, build things, Shire? Now that you're autonomous. South Thabad. <gasps> Excuse me. Looks like South and North Tharbad are at war. <laughs> okay, so I'm gaining some some ground on the financial side of things. Let's do stables for Bree now as well. Anuminas needs to start building junk. Oh, they already are. Because I queued it up. Looks like my guy can't go around. <laughs> yes, my lord. Without question. As you wish. I shall continue tomorrow. Rohan has declared war on Mordor. Good job, Rohan. Ooh, I just birthed a new kid, it looks like. Isengard must be owned by Isengard as well. That was fast. Uh oh. My mission failed. <laughs> I didn't get there in time. Yes, my lord. 
S yes. Stupid thing blocking my path. Lord Saruman. And we've got a Rohan army there as well. You bring a proposition for my king. We have no complaints with this plan. We accept. Cool. Goodbye. We look forward to our next meeting. You, you sound weird, Saruman. <laughs> But hey, trade with Saruman isn't too bad. Just means more money for me. Nice. But you know what? Since that Rohan army is there, maybe I'll try to establish a relationship with Rohan at the same time. Almost built. That's almost built. Staddle needs to be building something, so let's list the standing stones because why not? Let's get you some units there, Staddle, because you're kind of on the fringes as well. I believe this is supposed to be weather top. Yes, it is. Cool. Well, I think this is where we will end this first episode of Bradford Place, The Third Age. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I promise as the game goes progresses and goes on, we'll have a lot more action. We're just kind of establishing the early game, establishing you know, our military, our financials, and as of now, apparently I'm trading with Isengard because that's the thing that Eddie Adore did. So... Actually, if you look at it, it is, because, you know, they found South Farthing Weed in Isengard. So, yeah. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at LOTLLore. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel here. Uh, like, comment, let me know what you want to see. If there's another game you want me to play, and you want to see that is Lord of the Rings related, or just another game in general, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, though, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see from you guys. See you guys soon. Namadiate.